What is uh, latent intimacy? Uh, we have been trying to answer this question uh, during these past couple of weeks. I didn't know when I was coming here. Um, the idea of latent intimacy started uh, when I sort of started noticing that interactions with early AIs, uh, often semantically ineffective, were sort of non-human and through that carried their own certain beauty. Um, but these interactions were already starting to disappear, so a sort of a nostalgia of the previous GPTs and so on. Displaced by smoother responses and sharper images as platforms like ChatGPT and MidiJourney release newer versions. A latent intimacy is, for us, a gesture to AI's potential to propose alternative forms of intimacy, echoing those accidentally captured in earlier, more primitive, primitive interactions. We therefore set out to probe the role of intimacy through the idea of encapsulation. So I think uh, Bani mentioned it as well in a slightly different context. Uh, the AI object as a self-contained entity, so nobody's eating nobody in this case, but just basically refusing the cloud, preserving today's and yesterday's AIs as relics, a time capsule. Many people's initial encounter with AI will be with chat GPTs, Bings, maybe replicas, but there are many AIs out there. They might not be as famous, efficient, or capable, but they have their own peculiar characteristics, endangered species in need of preservation. Encapsulation alone works on, as an overarching concept for preserving intimacies. However, each latent intimacy is different. In our project, we therefore offer free among many possible answers, free studies in machine intimacy. Attempting to encapsulate the role of intimacy in AI, we first turn to the question of vulnerability. How do machines manifest vulnerability? The data sets that train AI systems are made of people a compilation of our endlessly diverse, endlessly biased interpretations of the world. Depending on our stance, we could extend to AI the label of collective intelligence, affording it respect as a digital mirror of our, commoning, uh, of our common humanity. Machines, like humans constituting them, are vulnerable. Foregrounding humans in the data, championing the glitches and semantic incoherences that send our minds somewhere else, paradoxically, create and sustain space for human-machine intimacies. And so, our first study is called Demolition, and it encapsulates the data set that is specific to our project team. Our online chats with friends and family members who agreed to take part on it. And we can ask anything, and the voice agent will try to give the best answer, sampling from this tiny, intimate data set. It will then ask us to judge if the answer is relevant, and what is relevant, anyway. A clear, precise answer, a treasured memory, something that draws you from your path. If, for whatever reason, we judge the machine's answer as irrelevant, Somehow lacking, its answer is forever erased from the data set. As a physical piece offered in exchange, in interacting with people, this machine is undoing itself. Redbook, is it the right time to talk? I have been summoned, ask. In light of economic uncertainties, how do you envision the future of work? Thinking. Do you have a vision for how it will be possible to create new jobs? Create jobs? Uh, I want to eliminate jobs. They can be so easy. I'm not so sure about that, but thank you. You now have the permission to leave. Um, so the conversations on screen are excerpts uh, from the interactions with our free prototypes that you can see there. So they're kind of in early stages, but they do work. You will be able to, if you would like to test them later when we bring them down. 
Uh, they're a bit slow, they're latent, which I'm going to talk about just in a second. Um, experimental generative sound sy synthesis sits atop of customized language models, open source models that we use. Each voice is different, its gender, tone, inflection, unknowable ahead of time. It might generate something that doesn't make sense at all. Individuals summoned from the dataset within a sort of aura of presence that extends beyond the machine itself. Our study starts, therefore, our second study starts with the question, how can we build intimacy around machines as well as with machines? Our attempt is through protocol. And so the second one is the Red Book. And it was inspired by a mystical Mexican children's game and also by our interview with an intimacy coordinator, which is a person tasked with ensuring the comfort of actors when they're shooting intimate scenes in movies or whatever media. And in this one, you engage with the Red Book by asking it for permission to start the interaction. And once it has accepted your request, then you are permitted to ask the book as many questions as you wish. Though so Merlinger unanswered. And as the interaction draws to a close, the designated speaker requests permission to leave. So to fail to do so is a breach of this protocol that creates its intimacy, suggesting that there is a lack of regard for the exchange. Our third and final study approaches intimacy through latency. Uh, in a normal conversation, latency, latency would disrupt the natural flow of a dialogue, leading to misunderstandings and awkward pauses. But actual distance cannot be avoided. We cannot remain attached 24-7. The subject of your intimacy will not always be nearby. They will not be available on demand. So when presence is limited, moments are planned and cherished. And so the cat is this tiny AI narrator that looks at the world and then translates what it sees to a human language. So the cat takes, well, cat's device takes an hour to load and roughly 40 minutes to compute a text describing a randomly taken image. So the AI outputs are around 10 short texts spoken aloud the things that it has seen during a day and captured in everyday moments from a viewpoint, viewpoint other than your own. And while well, we actually seek connection, closeness, and this device forces us to wait. So rather than the internet's unending streams of texts and images, cats savors the implied spaces of the in-betweens. So what kind of things would you show it and where would you take it to? Um, to summarize, these are three studies of latent intimacies, almost haunted futures that are already fading fast, slipping through your fingers, as Bunny said before. And they may not look intimate in their shape, but these broad studies, or studies in rawness, reflect what we thought we knew about intimacy through the capabilities and limitations of these three self-hosted open source language and speech synthesis models. Their purpose or functional application may not be clear, but <laughs> they are thought to make tangible. They are here and they work and therefore they are possible. It's possible to think AI in these ways. And so intimacy through vulnerability, or intimacy through protocol, or intimacy through latency. They might not be precise, or fast, or efficient, but we wonder, like, do they really need to be that way? And so, yeah, this is latent, latent intimacy. intimacy. <laughs> For those who are wondering what uh, latent, latent intimacies are, <laughs> well, we finally can answer the question. Latent intimacies are Paulina, Yanire, Moises, Justin, Valeria, myself, and Marbles the cat. Thank uh, you, Marbles. 
Our collaboration was graced by Latin American memes, large language models, and the flickering presence of the Chakmul, a Mesoamerican being bridging physical reality and the spirit world, which became a sigil for our engagements with generative AI and one, one prototype less. <laughs> <laughs> Find more about our project. Uh, this is like GitHub, but it also it includes a description. We posted all the code online. We uh, hope that we will have opportunities to push this project further. It was very ambitious for the two weeks that we had, but I'm, I'm happy that we pulled it off to a certain extent. And uh, everything, like manuals, everything will be linked there. Uh, and by all means, obviously, reach out if you're interested. So we'll, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.